something out of adjustment inside that steering column. I can't lock it or get the key out. You're the expert on these new columns, Mike. Can you and Tech tell me how they work and what to look for when I get one disassembled? Oh, not so fast, Ray, my boy. There's probably nothing wrong that a transmission shift linkage adjustment won't fix. But maybe Mike and I better explain how the locking mechanism works so you'll understand what shift linkage adjustment has to do with ignition key operation. This steering column I'm rebuilding for the body shop is as good a starting place as any, Ray. But let me explain what it does and how it does it. With the new column, the driver must put the transmission selector lever in park if it's a torque flight job, or reverse if it's a manual transmission, before he can turn the ignition key to the lock position to lock the steering wheel. Also, a buzzer warns the driver if he tries to leave the car without taking the key out of the ignition. On all 1970 models, the ignition key has five positions rather than four. Reading clockwise, they are accessory, lock, which is the added position, off, ignition run, and start. The key cannot be removed until the cylinder is turned to the lock position. Inside the steering column, the lock cylinder is connected to a cam mechanism. A pin at the other end of the cam provides a mechanical connection to operate the ignition switch. Let's see what the cam does. The cam operates a transmission interlock. The end of the interlock lever bears against the inner surface of the gear shift housing. In the position shown here, the ignition key and cam cannot be turned because the shift housing is not in park and the raised surface of the housing will not let the interlock or cam move. Here the transmission shift housing has been moved into the park position and the end of the interlock lever is free to move up into the recessed area of the shift housing. This lets the ignition key and cam be turned to the lock position. If the transmission linkage is misadjusted, the shift housing won't be in the park position when the transmission is actually in park, or reverse in the case of a manual transmission. That's probably what's wrong with the job you're working on. Will shift linkage misadjustment keep the steering lock from working too? It sure will, Ray, and I'll tell you why. The steering wheel lock lever pivots on the same pin as the transmission interlock. However, it is not actuated directly by the cam or attached to the interlock lever. Instead, the interlock and steering lock levers are coupled by a hairpin spring. When the interlock lever moves into the park position, the spring pushes the steering lock lever downward against the lock plate. However, the steering doesn't lock if the lever isn't lined up with one of the lock plate notches. As soon as the steering wheel is turned enough to align one of the lock plate notches with a lock lever, the spring pushes the lever into the notch. That's why you can lock the ignition and remove the key. But the wheel doesn't lock until it is turned enough to line up a lock plate notch. You mentioned the warning buzzer feature. How does it work? A micro switch located near the lock cylinder is closed when the key is inserted in the ignition switch. This switch is in series between the courtesy lamp switch on the door pillar and the warning buzzer. Now remember, the door pillar switches are ground switches. So if the key is left in the ignition and either door is opened, the ground circuit is completed and the buzzer sounds off to remind the driver to take the key out of the ignition. Do all 1970 columns work the same way? No, Ray, the tilt and the tilt and telescoping columns perform the same functions, but they're an entirely different design. I better explain what's inside those columns. The lock cylinder is connected to and drives a small sector gear. The sector teeth mesh with a set of rack teeth. As the ignition key is turned, the rack is moved up or down the steering column. An actuator rod connected to the rack also moves up or down as the ignition key is turned. The actuator rod operates the ignition switch mounted on the outside of the steering column jacket. Where does the shift interlock come in? A block that's part of the rack assembly moves down the column when the ignition key is turned to the lock position. If the shift housing is in park, the block moves into a recess in the shift housing. However, if the shift housing isn't in park, or reverse for a manual transmission, the block cannot enter the recess in the shift housing. 
As a result, the key can't be turned to the lock position. In this column, the steering lock mechanism is also different. It consists of a locking bolt, a spring, and a steering shaft lock plate. When the sector is turned to the locked position, the spring linkage pushes the lock bolt into one of the notches in the lock plate, providing, of course, that one of the notches lines up with the end of the bolt. This locks the steering shaft. Notice that in the locked position, the left end of the bolt has a notch which engages a notch or shoulder cut into the sector gear. This mechanical connection provides a positive withdrawal of the bolt from the lock plate when the ignition is unlocked. Of course, if the selector lever is in park and the key is turned to the locked position, the steering wheel does not lock immediately unless the bolt lines up with a lock plate notch. However, the spring load on the bolt will lock the wheel as soon as it's turned to the nearest lock notch. How about the warning buzzer switch for this column? The key warning buzzer switch fits into a cavity in the actuator housing. It's held in place by spring tension, and to remove it, you simply pull it out of its cavity. Electrically, the warning buzzer works the same on the tilt column as it does on a non-tilt column. There's one external adjustment that's peculiar to the tilt column. I better tell you about it. The ignition switch position on the steering column must be adjusted to make sure it's synchronized with the five key positions. To do this, turn the key to the lock position. Next, move the slider on the underside of the switch as far as it will go toward the lower end of the switch. Then move it back one position to the lock detent. Assemble the switch to the column without disturbing the slide lever. Leave the attaching screws finger tight. Pull downward on the switch just enough to take up all the linkage free play without changing the position of the switch slider. Tighten the attaching screws to hold this adjustment. That's all there is to it. Any questions, Ray? Not about the steering column, Tech. And now I understand why shift linkage adjustment affects key operation on steering column shift models. But how about console or floor shift models? <laughs> That's a good question, Ray. And Mike's just the guy who can answer it. All floor shift models have the same shift, steering lock, and key and lock warning buzzer features as column shift models. As a matter of fact, the steering column assemblies used for floor shift models virtually the same as column shift models, including the shift tube. All that's left off is the column shift lever. On floor shift models, the mechanism inside the steering column has to know when the transmission is in park or reverse, so it can allow the steering wheel to be locked and allow the key to be removed. That's where the shift interlock, or slave linkage, comes in. It tells the steering column shift tube what's happening at the transmission. The shift linkage must always be adjusted first. Then the slave linkage must be adjusted to make sure the transmission and steering column functions are properly synchronized. And speaking of shift linkage adjustment, I haven't counted them, but there must be over a dozen transmission, shift linkage, and slave linkage combinations. There's also a new fully synchronized three-speed transmission and a new three-speed floor shift mechanism. Today's subject has to do with synchronizing columns and transmissions. So there isn't much point in getting into the nuts and bolts of taking the new three-speed apart and putting it together. Besides, the service manual covers this quite thoroughly. However, I do think you, or any general mechanic for that matter, will find it useful to be familiar with the shift linkages, slave linkages, and their adjustments. The simplest and least changed linkages are on torque flight models with column shift. As a matter of fact, there's no change at all in the linkage setup on the compacts and the intermediates. The shift lever at the lower end of the steering column is connected to a torque shaft. A lever at the other end of the torque shaft is connected to the transmission control lever. Adjustment is simple. Shift the transmission into park, turn the ignition key to lock, loosen the adjusting swivel, push the control lever all the way to the rear, to make sure the transmission's in the park detent. Tighten the swivel to hold this adjustment. 
The Challenger and Barracuda linkages are a bit different. Hold it, Mike. You can tell Ray about those other models as soon as someone turns the record. The linkage on the new Challengers and Barracudas is adjusted exactly like the compacts, but the torque shaft arrangement is somewhat different. On these models, the adjusting swivel is at the frame end of the torque shaft. How about the Chryslers and the big Dodges and Plymouths? The adjustment is at a slotted joint in the front shift rod, and the torque shaft is different. However, the actual adjustment procedures are the same as the other models with column shift. When you get into torque flight models with floor shift, the linkage has about twice as many levers and rods. However, they won't give you any trouble if you'll just remember you're dealing with two separate systems, the slave system and the basic shift system. The basic floor shift system is the same as it was on last year's torque flight models. There's a short upper rod, a vertical torque shaft, and a rod connecting the lower end of the torque shaft to the control lever. About the only difference, we used to call this rod the lower rod. Now it's called a rear rod. The slave linkage looks very much like the torque flight column shift linkage for the compact and intermediate models. There's a front rod, a torque shaft, and an intermediate rod. The only change is in the job this linkage is doing. On floor shift models, the slave linkage's job is to let the steering column lock mechanism know what gear the transmission is in. It doesn't have anything to do with gear selection, unless it's misadjusted so badly it interferes with shifting. How do you go about adjusting a floor shift torque flight? Shift the transmission into park, lock the ignition, loosen both adjusting swivels, push the control lever all the way to the rear into the park detent, then simply tighten both swivels. What if the adjustment's so far off to begin with that you can't lock the ignition? Try moving the shift lever a bit out of the park slot to see if that'll let you turn the key and lock the ignition. If that doesn't work, loosen the slave linkage swivel and have someone move the slave linkage very slowly while you try to turn the ignition key in the lock. Once you get the ignition locked and the shift lever in park, the rest of the adjustment's a pushover. But I guess I better turn it back to Mike and let him tell you about the Challenger and Barracuda. The slave linkage system for the Challenger and the Barracuda looks much like the column shift linkage for these models. This linkage adjustment is made at the swivel located at the frame end of the torque shaft. The Challenger and Barracuda floor shift linkage is different than the setup on any of the other models. There's a long upper rod, a vertical rear torque shaft, and a rear rod connecting the lower end of the torque shaft to the control lever at the transmission. Although the linkage system looks different, the adjustment procedure is the same as other floor shift models. Shift into park, lock the ignition, loosen the slave linkage swivel and the shift swivel. Push the control lever all the way into park and then tighten the swivels. <laughs> I think I have that routine down pat now. As long as you get everything in park and locked before you tighten the adjusting swivels, you can't miss. That's the name of the torque flight game, Ray. So let's tackle the manual transmission jobs. Compacts and intermediates with three-speed manual transmissions and column shift are just about the same as last year's models. If anything, shift linkage adjustment is easier than previous models because some of the adjusting swivels have been moved to locations where they're easier to get at. With a manual transmission, you shift into reverse and lock the ignition. Next. Loosen the low reverse sliding swivel and make sure the low reverse shift lever is seated in the reverse detent position. Then, tighten the low reverse swivel. To adjust the crossover and second third rod, shift into neutral. Insert a tool to hold the column crossover blade in alignment with both column levers. Loosen the second third swivel and make sure the second third lever is in its neutral detent position. Tighten the swivel to hold the adjustment. On Chrysler's and the big Dodges and Plymouth's, the column shift linkage for a three-speed manual has a torque shaft between the second and third shift rod and the transmission shift lever. Although the adjusting swivel locations are different, linkage adjustment is the same as for compacts and intermediates. How about crossover adjustment? <laughs> 
Check your adjustment by shifting through all gears. If there's any crossover roughness, realign the crossover blade by readjusting the 2-3 swivel. Don't disturb the low and reverse rod because that might put the column lock out of kilter. How about the clutch interlock adjustment? It's the same as last year, Ray. However, it's only used on some of the six-cylinder models. The new fully synchronized three-speed used on other models doesn't need a clutch interlock to protect the low and reverse gears. Incidentally, all 1970 models with manual transmission are equipped with a clutch safety switch. This switch, connected to the ground terminal of the starter relay, is normally open. The engine cannot be cranked unless the clutch is depressed, closing the switch. Right about here, I think Mike ought to tell you about the shift interlock mechanism used in the new three-speed manual transmission. Sure thing, Tech. Two notched interlock levers are used instead of detent balls, Ray. The levers pivot on a pin in the shift housing and are loaded by a single coil spring stretched between the two levers. When the shift levers and forks are assembled to the shift housing, the end of each shift fork fits into the notches in both shift levers. This forms an interlock so that one shift lever and fork can be moved only if the other is in neutral. And that brings us to the floor shift three speeds. The simplest linkage is on the valiants and darts. The slave linkage consists of a single rod connecting the lever at the end of the steering column to the low and reverse lever at the transmission. The two shift rods connect the transmission shift levers to the floor shift mechanism. The first adjustment step is to shift into reverse and lock the ignition. Then you disconnect the slave linkage from the transmission shift lever and leave it disconnected while you adjust the basic shift system. To do this, the transmission must be shifted into neutral. Next, disconnect the threaded adjusting swivels and slip the special aligning tool into place. This holds the shift housing levers in neutral and ensures good crossover alignment. Adjust the swivels so they can be reconnected without disturbing the transmission shift levers. Once the basic shift system is set up, remove the crossover aligning tool and shift into reverse. To finish the job, adjust the slave system swivel so that it can be reconnected without moving the low and reverse lever. And that takes care of the compact. The Challenger and Barracuda slave linkage setup is entirely different. A torque shaft is used and the slave system adjustment is at the outer end of the torque shaft. There are actually two levers at the frame end of the torque shaft. One of these levers is attached to the torque shaft, the other is slotted and attached to the first lever by an adjusting bolt and nut. Changing the position of the slotted lever adjusts the slave link. Although the adjusting points are different from the compacts, the procedure for adjusting the Barracuda and Challenger linkages is exactly the same. As a matter of fact, the adjusting procedure is the same for the intermediates, too. Incidentally, all models with three-speed transmission and floor shift use the same aligning tool to lock the shifter mechanism in neutral while you adjust the shift rods. You can easily make this tool out of a piece of 1 16th stock. The reference book has the details. The basic four on the floor shift linkage is essentially the same as it was last year. All three shift rods are adjusted with the shift mechanism locked in the neutral crossover position using the special crossover aligning tool. The only real change on the four speed is the addition of the slave linkage. It uses a torque shaft and the adjustment is a sliding swivel at the front of the intermediate rod. The other end of the intermediate rod connects to the transmission's reverse lever. Of course, the slave linkage is adjusted with the transmission in reverse and the ignition in the locked position, just like the three-speed manual transmissions. Boy, I think I'm going to dream about rods and levers and swivels tonight. But now that I know what's inside the new steering column and have been introduced to all the linkage combinations, I'll know how to tackle a problem of a stuck ignition key. <laughs> I reckon you will, Ray. Shift linkages may not be the most exciting part of the car, but I think you'll admit they are mighty important. Besides, the new locking steering column is a good feature. 
but it won't work if the shift linkage isn't adjusted right. If you'll use this month's reference book and your service manuals, you shouldn't have any trouble handling shift linkage problems and ignition keys that won't lock. See you all next month in Master Tech Color again, naturally. <laughs>